Lewis, outdoor Lou, contacts, Ludi. Hello. Hello. I've never been on a skidoo before. Oh my god. Yeah, it's been tough on the body. You guys want to go to the gorge, obviously. That's that's quite a trip. You know, 80 kilometers in, 80 kilometers out. Probably 30 kilometers on a groomed trail. If you get off the groomed trail and you just go across the country, you're, you're not following like a defined, like set trail. There's no civilization, just endless rolling hills covered in snow. With every view that you see is epic. Do you think two days is like, I know it's a lot of snowmobiling for for newbies, if we get bad weather, you know, it's, it's a long distance to go if, know, yeah. if one of those days gets kind of kiboshed. You could come for a week and, and not get one for your day where you can see anything. It's windier, you can feel it. It's gonna get worse as you go further. All things are uh, starting to get wet out there across a good chunk of the island. Things will start to stick in. We haven't even started the trip, but it's already off to an interesting and dramatic start. <laughs> your flight from Toronto to St. John's, Newfoundland has been canceled due to bad weather, which has impacted departure destination airport flight path for your journey. You are responsible for your own happiness. Powerful insight Chris offered to me during a time of uncertainty. That simple phrase stuck with me, and with time, I realized it applies to everything in life, work, relationships, and even dealing with the weather. In the past, I found myself complaining about the long, harsh winters. I would make myself absolutely miserable, dreading the cold and avoiding going outside. Feeling like that for five out of 12 months is quite a long time. And I didn't like basing my mood around what was happening outside. The words, you are responsible for your own happiness, echoed in my mind once again. And I decided to change my mindset on the season. I started with the standard stuff, building fires in the snow, preparing warm meals, and deliberately creating cozy moments with blankets and candles when the early night arrived. I also changed my approach to planning outdoor activities. Instead of trying to make the most of the fading daylight, I started scheduling activities for after dark. But this year, I wanted to take things to the next level, to challenge myself to do something I had always dreamed of, snowmobiling. But I didn't want to settle for just a short ride. I wanted a real winter backcountry adventure, an expedition that would push me beyond my comfort zone. Naturally, my thoughts gravitated back to my favorite place in the world, Newfoundland and Labrador. Our friend Lewis and I had been discussing such a trip for years, and we decided it was time to turn our plans into reality. We're doing like a road fools, you know, Lewis Martin, 36 years old from Upper New Latin, and we doing that. Yeah, this is like road fools. Oh, yeah. Lewis Martin I met when I was in high school. I originally met Chris from, from BMX riding. And that stands for bicycle motocross. And the type of riding we would do was freestyle BMX. We would be doing tricks on our tiny little bikes as grown up teenagers slash young adults. He had a BMX bike frame for sale and, and I needed a bike frame. So I contacted him through a friend. He showed up at my doorstep and we just exchanged money for this frame. And then it was only a short time after that that we started riding BMX together. Our lives revolved around this. Lewis and all our friends would show up at my doorstep. We would ride all day, shoot video. Lewis would shoot photos. For us, making a BMX video, that was a big production. We both had a, a pretty equal passion for BMX. I might not have been as skilled as, as Chris uh, on the bike, but I certainly made up for that in a lot of other ways by I think supporting the community. He also hosted a website, NLBMX, which was kind of like the hub and how everybody communicated before the days of social media as we know it. I didn't have a cell phone then, so that's the era we were talking about. We used to organize like little events, barbecues, bike jams, we used to call them, basically all get together and go riding. I was constantly getting hurt. Probably one of my worst injury, one was where I was grinding an uh, old wooden handrail. A grinding a handrail would be when you jump on your bike and then you land on the rail with small little steel appendages called pegs that stick off the axles of the bike and they land on the rail and you slide down the rail. The handrail snapped and I smacked my neck off the end of the handrail and flipped over. I was temporarily paralyzed for probably eight to 10 seconds and that was probably the scariest moment of my life. And then the other injury that I can remember <laughs> Just kidding, I have no actual recollection of this because I knocked myself silly. I was grinding another handrail. My back peg slipped off this flimsy rail, got caught in the, one of the upright supports, and basically slid scorpion style on my face across the pavement. And the impact just knocked me out. Yeah, I have had a few injuries, haven't I? Oh, fuck it! So for a living, I, I work for the federal government. I do IT computer work. I'm an IT architect is what they call me. So fun uh, really depends on the season. So summer, fishing, fall, hunting is my main focus. And then winter, uh, snowmobiling. Got it all covered. Yeah, springtime is a, is a bit slow for me, but uh, that's when I spend time with family and uh, do other things, get ready for, this, for the season, basically. All right, we've arrived in Newfoundland after our first flight got canceled. 
now we have to pick up a vehicle which has been sitting dormant probably for a few months. Hopefully it starts. We were supposed to get in yesterday and that would have given us a nice pace, a nice 24 hour buffer, but now we've already eaten the buffer up on the front end of our trip. We have no days or hours to spare. So we have to get the car tonight, drive back to Becky's parents' house, spend the night, and then tomorrow morning at around sunrise, we'll be leaving to go pick up our buddy Lou, who lives in the middle of the island, and then keep going west and then hit the west coast of the island, which is our final destination, and where we have the cabin rented and we're gonna, where we're gonna be snowmobiling. So we don't have a lot of room for any delays. Um, hopefully the weather holds. I think the forecasts are supposed to be good, but it's Newfoundland, so you know things can be very unpredictable. What happens if we can't get the truck started? Um, if we can't get the truck started, then this puts a whole kibosh on our whole entire trip. All right, I thought it might be slow starting because it's diesel and it's been sitting for a while. Do the key? Do the key. Moment of truth. Let's see it. All right! Anticlimactic, actually. Yeah. After an eventful start resulting in our trip being cut a day short, it was time to get the truck packed up and get ready for our early morning departure. Okay, we're leaving St. John's now. We got on the road sort of on time. We're about a half hour later than we wanted to be, but we're gonna go pick up Lou now in Clarenville, which is about a little over two hours outside of St. John's. And then we've got probably another five hours until we get to the west coast of the island. One of the reasons why I got so hooked on, on snowmobiling, the first time I did it, I happened to have one of those bluebird days with a lot of fresh snow. It was my first time, and as soon as I stepped on a snowmobile, I immediately thought that I was back at uh, St. John's Money Pond Skate Park, just carving around in the half pipes, in the quarter pipes, in the bowls. It brought back a lot of feelings. Bluebird Day is a day where you have no clouds, blue sky, and lots of snow to play in. Uh, pretty rare in these parts. So the weather here can change in a matter of minutes. We have rain, drizzle, fog. That's really what we're known for the most. And this time of year, you have a lot of blowing snow, a lot of high winds situations it can be hard to see where you're going and, and dangerous to navigate. So when you get those bluebird days, you really take advantage. It's calling for one tomorrow. I have everything on my whole body crossed so I can show you guys what that's like. We have three days to try to make our skidoo trip happen. Things can change. We're gonna be in the mountains, but uh, fingers crossed we can make our goal tomorrow of getting out to the gorge. I've been looking at the weather for the last two weeks straight every day, trying to get a better idea of what it's gonna be like so I can adjust accordingly. Really wanna to try to take advantage of the good weather. If we can have a good day tomorrow, then I think that will really uh, make the trip. Wednesday is gonna be, probably have harder visibility with gray skies against the white snow. And Thursday looks like there's a system coming in, so we may get some flurries at high elevation, which is where we'll be spending most of our time. That could turn into a full-on blizzard within a matter of minutes. We're probably not gonna get all bluebird days, but if we can get one out of three, it, it'll be it'll be a banner day for sure. Tomorrow looks like definitely gonna be able to get into the gorge, which is usually the hardest place to get into. It's a, it's a glacier carved area that is very uh, high elevation, some of the highest elevation we have in the province. That's located in Grossmore National Park. It's one of the most northern aspects of the Appalachian mountain range. We've seen it now from the water, but we've never seen it from the top when it is snowing. The multi-day hike that you would have to do in the summer turns into an 80 kilometer one-way sled trip. This is like flying all over again. Yeah. Can't go if it's the visibility is too poor. Yeah, it should be fun. I just don't like being cold. That's the only thing. Um, we just passed like the only gas station for a long time and we barely have any gas. Dude, we got 3 16ths of a tank. This truck takes diesel. I don't know if every gas station has diesel. I don't know, let's find out. On eighth of tank. Oh my god. How are we gonna make it here? We have 14 kilometers left. Yeah, we've got like a sixteenth of a tank. Golden. Tank. One sixteenth. Getting pretty close to empty. <laughs> 800 meters. Your destination. Gassed up, back on the road. We made it. Here is the pickup. And trailer. Yes, bye. What are you at? Here it's at. Is that Lewis Martin? It is. I haven't <laughs> seen Lewis Martin in years. Becky and Chris. How's How you doing, man? Good. Think we brought enough gear? Yeah. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did we bring too much? No. Oh, here they are. Look at this. Wow. This is gonna be. This is gonna be so fun. <laughs> I can't wait. This is gonna be so, so excited. Fun. I feel like uh, I might get hurt. Ah, uh, no. no. I won't let you get hurt. Man, you know me, right? You know me. No, there's no handrails, so you'll be okay. <laughs> We've been doing a lot 
lot of this. A lot of getting gas for sure. For the trucks and for the sleds. Ludi, we're actually doing this, man. It's finally happening. Dude, we, we, we've been talking about doing this for like three fucking years. Forever. I, I've never been so be like. Yeah. So I just, it's not something that we're like, I'm salivating over it, but like only thinking about it recently now and like see how excited you get over it. I'm like, this is something that I'm going to be so into. Yeah, I picture you guys uh, buying a couple sleds in the next couple of years because I'll enjoy it so much. This is going to cost me money, isn't it? <laughs> this is going to cost you some money. This is going to cost you so much money. <laughs> Are you the best man? Absolutely. Wear it right at my face. <laughs> best man. <laughs> Do a little check, make sure nothing's moved around and everything's still tight. We're all good. All good in there? All good. Don't want to lose those, so we'll be in trouble. <laughs> all right, little Tim Hortons break. I got a coupon for Irving. Yes, five. Five cents off a liter. <laughs> How, how's it look in there? Oh, it looks great. Yeah. Nothing's, no, moved. nothing's moved. Everything's all in one piece still. Fuck, it's cold, man. Cold as it After dipping down a lot since we left, I think. Yeah. We're in Central now. Central Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Great, we made it to Deer Lake. We are officially across the province. So we're stopping for a quick bite to eat. We're gonna get some groceries, then we're gonna head into the cabin. I think later this evening, Lou's gonna get us on the sleds to get used to it. I'm not like fully nervous yet. Like I'm excited, but I have a feeling tomorrow that my feelings are gonna change a little bit. You'll be okay. We'll be fine. Mm. We're going straight back. It's not for him. Straight back? Should be okay, yeah. So tonight, I think we should get on the sleds for, for a little bit, do a little crash course uh, without the crashing, hopefully. Getting used to like the two of you guys on the sled, how that's going to work, so that we don't waste any time tomorrow. Uh, I'm definitely going to be paying attention to how you guys are doing, that's for sure. And that's going to be the gauge on how fast and, and where we travel to tomorrow. If uh, you guys don't make it very far out of the driveway here, then uh, I'm going to be taking it pretty easy so that uh, we make it back in one piece. All right, shall we go? A lot of layers. What do you got on? I've got a wool base layer on, brown pants, lace sweater. <laughs> this is how wool goes. Hopefully it fits. I hope so too. Tight? I think it fits. Oh, he's got the pro gear here. <laughs> Look, Lou's buddy lent me his helmet. Is there a way that these come off? Yep, so uh, flip down your mouthpiece again. Yeah, you gotta do it in the right order though. You gotta put the goggles on first. Is this a loop around the house? It's a loop around the house set. There's a couple of little uneven places that will kind of get you the feel for how the machine reacts. I'm gonna do a loop around the house. This is the test. Nice. Man, that first test run with Lou, like he doesn't he doesn't hold back. <laughs> I can count on one hand the number of times I've actually ever been on a skidoo before. I don't think Becky's ever been on one. Going at night in the dark on these narrow little trails, and he, we're going pretty fast. This feels so sketchy. <laughs> As we set out for our evening test run, we started running into a couple of issues. With the icy conditions and lack of loose snow, Lewis's high performance sled began to overheat, casting a sense of foreboding over our adventure. Brutal. What was this? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> we came all this way, only to find that the gas station was closed, even though on Google Maps it said they're open till 10 p.m. and it's before 10 p.m. right now. So it's okay, it was a trial run. We know what's gonna work and what's not gonna work tomorrow. Lewis was having some trouble with his, his is a, like, his sled is a very high performance sled. So the engine is super powerful, runs really hot. These snow conditions where it's like really just riding on groomed trails is not great because not a lot of snow is getting kicked up to cool the engine. And so he's having to like stop, shove snow into his radiator. We'll just come tomorrow and get trail passes and uh, fuel. Back to the cabin. We were hoping these issues weren't foreshadowing for the entire trip. However, as the evening unfolded, it became clear that our venture was bound to be more challenging than we had initially anticipated. So what happened? She's overheating really bad. Still? Yeah, still, yeah. Even putting the flap on? The flap on didn't help. The snow was just too hard. It's not kicking up anything to cool it down. Do you think it would be different on the trails up by the park? We don't really know. We have a lot of country 
to travel before we get there too. It was it was looking good. It was staying pretty good for a while. It stayed at 70, which is still hot. And then it just gradually started creeping up and then got got too hot. Hopefully we can get something in Deer Lake. We won't have to go very far. On our bluebird day. I know. <laughs> I'm pissed. Well, there's not much I can do about the conditions, unfortunately. There's always something to mess up your good day. That's life. How'd you sleep? Uh, not real good. No. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Kind of worried about today. Call the first place that has rentals, but they don't do it anymore apparently. The only other option we have is a place in Cornbrook called Rugged Edge. You could be there for nine and get a slide. We could be back here by about 10, and then we could get a stall fairly quickly after that. But other than that, <laughs> that's really the only plan that we have. I really hope we don't have to waste today because that would be a real sin. I didn't sleep good knowing that I'm just, today's an unknown, so. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but I did sleep, so. Mm. I did have a dream we got a sled, so. <laughs> Love you. Bye. You gotta get a running start at it? Gotta get a running start. Yeah, I wonder why my sled is uh, overheating is all ice. <laughs> Got out of the driveway, imagine. <laughs> One more hurdle we had to jump through. <laughs> oh, well, there's not many more of these hurdles. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> when are they open, Lou? Yeah, 9 a.m. And we're gonna get there when? 8.59 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't care what time we get there, as long as we have a sled. <laughs> Yeah, if possible. I'm over. I have a lot of problem waiting for you out overheating. Just one. Yeah. Too many, too much. Too. No sweat. Yeah. Nerve wracking. Yeah, definitely nerve wracking. <laughs> I'll take anything. I don't really. Okay. Something that's, that's going to be good and not overheating. So what, what? Conditions are not great where I'm to. Over today, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, we got one five fifty. He needs back for more reason. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> How you, business. How do you feel about driving a Polaris? I'm not real excited about it, but uh, <laughs> I'll make it work. All right, it worked out, Chris. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> she'll do. Yeah, she'll do for sure. All right, Lewis, take two. <laughs> Try it again. This is our bluebird day. We got half of it wasted trying not to mess around getting sleds and that. Do you think we'll be able to get to the gorse today? I think so, yeah. As long as you guys aren't too slow. So you're saying I should drive, not Becky? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. I'm not nervous and I'm concerned that I'm like, why am I not nervous? I'm like excited and normally this is like something that would cause me a great, like a great amount of anxiety. Like, oh my God, what if we die? And I'm like, not feeling like that, so. So you have anxiety about not having anxiety? Yes. <laughs> Two bungee cords. No good. One ratchet strap. Solid. Not going anywhere. She ain't going anywhere. <laughs> she ain't going Anywhere. After our trial run last night and a little bungle with the sleds this morning, it was finally time to start our trek to the gorge. So our first stop was to pick up passes so we could actually ride our skidoos in the park. Out of passes? We're rerouting so we can get a park pass because they don't have any here. It doesn't really mess us up that much. We have to backtrack a little bit. All right, we just stopped in and got our park passes, so we're good to go. How long is it till the gorge? How many kilometers? About uh, 90, 80, 90. 90 kilometers. How's your sled holding up, Lou? Pretty good, not too bad. A bit slower than I'm used to, but a bit rougher than I'm used to. I'll survive. <laughs> If we get an average 30, we'll get there in under three hours. There's a big pond coming up here, and now we're gonna go right along it, and we're gonna be able to go a good clip across that pond for sure. Chris, I think, is going to feel the same way as I do about, about snowmobiling pretty quickly. If, if we can find what we're looking for uh, in terms of conditions and, and the right snow and the right areas, I think Chris is, is definitely going to uh, be over the moon about snowmobiling. That's about as tight and as twisty and turny as it's gonna get. That was pretty technical. Yeah. Dude, we hit 120 back there. Yes, you do that. I got good confidence in here. You're gonna be okay. All right, all right. I've known Becky for as long as 20 years, at least. Becky would be a little bit more nervous about, about the things that we're gonna do, some of the terrain that we might be going over, but I think she is going to overcome that pretty quickly once she sees uh, the terrain that we're in. And she'll have appreciation for it for different reasons than, than I do. I mean, I, I appreciate the scenery and the beauty uh, of the province uh, just as much as I do well, the actual riding aspect of it. But I think Becky's gonna really gravitate towards the scenery and the beauty of it. 
Well, Lou was right. The scenery was majestic and I had to take a moment to hop off the sled and soak in my surroundings. We made each stop quick given the extensive distance we had to cover. Little did I know, a mistake I had made earlier in the day ended up causing an unexpected extended delay that kind of changed the trajectory of our trip. We're just weaving through these narrow trails, ripping across these open ponds. We found a spot to stop and eat lunch. We're in the Lund, go play for a snack. We're getting close to the park now. This is just all government owned land. So your, your fuel tank is registering half. half right now. And we're halfway to the gorge. Yeah. Not so, <laughs> I, I, I ain't no math whiz, but that would suggest that we have enough fuel to get to the gorge and not get you out. I didn't uh, really know how this, this sled would be on, guys. I knew it was going to be harder. So Meg goes over to go pee, and she ends up falling in a tree well. Tree well is where the snow kind of tapers in towards the tree, and it can be a bit dangerous because if you step in, in that area, it's all loosely packed, and you can just really you can sink down and get stuck. Do you have a garment? Uh, no, do you? We go to leave, and the Garmin in Reach, which is the device that connects to satellites and also connects to our phones, it's one way that we can easily communicate with people if, worst case scenario, we have some sort of catastrophic incident. She checks, it's no longer around her neck. Lou's out of fuel. <laughs> Becky's lost the Garmin in Reach. <laughs> well, we probably spent how long? Probably an hour looking for that Garmin in Reach. We sent it a message, and it's supposed to beep until you answer the message. We couldn't hear it beep at all. We came very close to saying, you know what? Let's cut our losses. We spent almost an hour looking for this thing. At this point, it's getting later in the day. Let's just forge ahead. I decided to have one more look over by the tree well, knowing that Becky had fallen in it. And I got down on my hands and knees and I heard a faint chirping coming from the hole where she fell in. Oh yeah, it's in there, sure. Snow is very soft and it absorbs sound very well. It's a very good insulator. We could only barely faintly hear it chirping from what, four feet down in the snow. And I just basically went head first into the tree well and actually surprisingly was able to recover it. Holy fuck. Holy shit. It was actually so deep. Like my head was in the hole and I was reached full arm stretched out. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Thank you. I'm so sorry. That was my biggest. <laughs> well, I just fucked up our whole day. Yeah, I didn't fuck up our whole day, but I'm gonna fuck it up right now. I checked my GPS. We did 58 kilometers, and I have less than half a tank. We have 100 to get back to the house. It's, it's too close, especially with the time of day. As you notice, everyone was on the way out. It's not ideal. I don't want to be out of gas in the dark. No, 100%. This is still like full. Yeah, I looked in there, there's no hose. I don't know what to think, man. <laughs> I'm rattled here now. I knew this would be worse on gas. I did not expect it to be this bad. I, it's, I feel like the last couple of days has been like a really weird Swiss cheese model of like things going wrong. That's what I'm always thinking about is Swiss cheese model of things because all I can think about was us getting into, ish, into an issue somehow. Like Lou running out of gas, he leaves us, we don't hear it from him. We don't have the inReach because we abandoned it. Yeah. So that's what was going through my head was like, we have to find this inReach. It's like, if you have one issue, it's one thing, but if you have multiple issues, that's that's how like that Swiss cheese model works. Yeah. Holes line up. Definitely. I don't want to add any more holes to this. No more holes, Louie. Honestly, this has been pretty epic. Just objectively, this is a very beautiful mm -hmm. landscape. If we don't make it all the way there on this trip, gotta come back. Which means we have to come back. We're yeah. playing players, that's all. If we had have started when we wanted to start this morning with the free ride, mm -hmm. We, we would be in the gorge right now. So this snow is fine for the free ride. Perfect. Oh, so maybe we should just try tomorrow with the free ride. I think we should. That's oh. showing full now. That's showing full? So maybe the capacity of that tank is only 24 liters. We'll take advantage of the, the fact that we're already here anyway. With our mission to reach the gorge postponed until the following day, Lou took us to a place nicknamed Narnia where we spent the afternoon. Despite setbacks, the day gifted us unforgettable memories, revealing a side of our home province I had never seen. Experience.
the place had this almost like mystical quality to it. So magical with these snow tufted trees and the variety of the geography just was amazing. And it totally lived up to the name Narnia. I was disappointed that we weren't gonna see the gorge, but I also understood the realities of a trip like this. When you're making these treks to a remote location with no services, essentially into the wilderness, things can go bad really fast. Seeing this part of the province we grew up in and seeing this amazing scenery, we were having a great time exploring this, this wilderness. This is how I feel. Happy 100th old. birthday. Due to a series of events yesterday, we didn't make it to the gorge. It was like Swiss cheese, like a bunch of things kind of led up to us kind of not being able to get there. But we had an amazing day yesterday, amazing views, and it was just really cool to be out in the landscape for the first time. But today is gorge day, so long as the snow holds off until 4 p.m., which it's supposed to, but we're in Newfoundland, so you never know. The wind has picked up today. I can see the trees moving a lot. So I think today is gonna be a lot different than yesterday. We're always traveling based on the weather with helicopter. Visibility can drop and we can't fly. And it's the same with, with snowmobiles. Like if it starts snowing and the visibility isn't good, then we have to turn around and come back out of it. So I'm excited to get out there and see what the gorge looks like from the top if we make it. Now the wind's after dying down. So nice. you never know. All right, we're gonna eat breakfast and then we're gonna get on the go early this morning. <laughs> Lewis, Chef Lewis. We quickly fell into a routine of bundling up and packing the sleds with extra layers, our lunch, and lots of water. And today, we'd be leaving our rented Polaris at the cabin. Yeah, we're trailing the sleds to the uh, end of White River Road. It's gonna be a little bit smoother for us. It's pretty bumpy down this way yesterday, so we're gonna make it easier on everybody and uh, take the smooth route. But we'll be able to get into elevation quicker, so I have to free ride in the trailer. I really hope it works out. A little bit nervous about it, but uh, if I can uh, get into the deeper snow, and there's lots of places on that road to get off the trail, where I can uh, get some snow underneath it to get it cool. Hoping we can make a good day out of it today. So. All right, so a lot of variables are at play here today. So first of all, we've made a decision not to leave directly from the cabin, which we could have done. We could have gotten to the gorge from the cabin just like we tried yesterday. It's a bit of a longer run through a few more tangly trails. Is that gonna reach? We got that experience yesterday, but the mission at hand is to get to the gorge. Camp number two for the gorge. Attempt number two. <laughs> but we're hoping we don't run into the same issue on the first night where we had really icy trails and there wasn't enough snow being kicked up in the radiator to cool the engine properly. So by going to directly to these deeper trails that we're going on to, that shouldn't be an issue. We should get better snow to help cool the machine. But if that machine doesn't cool, we might have to turn around and go get the other sled, which would put us really far behind in the day. And we're supposed to get some weather coming in in the afternoon. So there's a very real scenario where the stars don't align and we don't ever make it to the gorge. So I'm gonna go pretty fast in this trail so I can keep that thing cool. So just, just keep on the road. Right. If there's anywhere I think you go wrong, I'll stop there. Now that we had a little bit of fresh snow, Lou was comfortable taking his own sled that he knew the fuel economy on and he knew he'd be able to get into the gorge and out on a single tank of gas. But the new challenge ahead of us was trying to do this trip where now visibility was a very big concern. Visibility is not good. You can probably see maybe 500 meters, and it's gonna get worse as you go up higher. How far are we away from the gorge? <laughs> A long ways. We're only at the warm-up shack on White River Road. I don't know how much further we're gonna get, but we're gonna have a fun day anyway. Already, I've already had a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> so since you are here. Yeah, we're at that warm-up shack right there, yeah. So we have to go in here, 
across this lake, and then all the way up through there. So about a quarter of the way? Yeah, about a quarter of the way, I'd say. And okay. the easiest quarter by far. It doesn't improve as you go in. It's just put it that way, especially once you get into the park. But it seems like it's getting a tiny bit better. I can see the tops of those trees over there now. I couldn't see those when I got here. We'll wait it out a bit and get warmed up and see how it looks. Oh, right, right so we were around Angus Lake yesterday. Yeah, we were in Angus Lake yesterday. We needed to keep going in here and hit this yellow. This is the snow wheel corridor in Grossmoor. But we uh -huh. need to travel on this one all the way up to Western Bukhan viewpoint. The yellow areas are the only areas where non-residents, so that includes myself and you, are allowed to travel. It's, it's unique because you get the snowmobile in national park. We don't get to do that in any other national park. If you, if you live in one of these communities here, you're allowed to travel uh, in, in the green area. The red areas are no go. But you have to have special permits and stuff. As long as the ceiling is at or above the level of the gorge edge, you still could see through the gorge and still get like a really nice yeah. view. Yeah. We'll go a little bit further, at least to try to get to the park border. That's kind of where everything gets stretched up, gets bigger. Um, and that's where you will have more trouble with your ceiling being too low for your elevation. Yeah. I usually make the call whether I know I'm gonna go in when I get to Angus Lake. So if we get to Angus Lake and visibility is not improving or it's getting worse, then we're, we're not gonna go any further. Is it black spruce? Black spruce. It smells like Newfoundland. Definitely. Yeah. Is it warmer out? It feels a lot warmer, less windy, and better visibility. The ceiling started to lift as the day stretched on, and we decided to push ahead towards our goal of trying to make it to the gorge. We're on the other side of Angus. Angus Lake's right there. As you saw in the lake, it was pretty blustery. Yeah, right? there was a point there where the wind was kicking up snow. Yep. And the visibility started to get a little yeah. bit poor. Like I started losing you in front of me. Yeah. But then like we went to the next lake over and it was like perfect. At that point, you kind of realize that when you go with somebody who is more experienced and who is well-versed as a guide, you are literally putting your life in their hands. We're not that much further to the park. I think we'll push ahead a little bit further, and if at any point I, I, I think it's no good, I'll just I'll just call it and we'll turn around. The thing I appreciate about Lou is that, he, and up front he told us, you know, if I deem these conditions to be unsafe, I'm going to be quite upfront with you. I'm going to tell you I don't feel like this is something we should continue with. Like I saw the sun poking through a few minutes ago, <laughs> so it's like that's beautiful, man. It's like you know, right, hit or miss. Yeah. The worst part of it right now is the light is really really flat and it's hard to see where the bumps and, and everything are too. So that's why I'm slowed down, I'm taking my time. Yeah. And I don't want to get separated from you guys too. We'll go a little further and we'll just keep making calls. If at any point you guys are not comfortable, just let me know and we'll go. I won't go too fast, I'm running fine there now, so. But we're not gonna be able to stay there for long, I can tell you that when we get there with this wind. We're gonna yeah. go up and like, we're gonna wanna come down pretty quick. <laughs> Cause it's really windy. As we made it closer to the gorge, the wind picked up and visibility continued to deteriorate. Dude, I'm scared to go over the gorge. Windy, are you feeling? It's gonna get worse as you go further. It's starting to kick up snow now. It wasn't doing that down there. At a certain point, he turned around and said, "Hey, I don't think we should forge ahead." This is getting me out. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I can tell in your eyes. There was zero definition of horizon. You could not see where the white snow in front of you transitioned into the horizon. It was just all white. It was essentially just white out conditions. And unfortunately, we had to make a no-go decision again, not because of the fuel, not because we lost the inReach, but this time because the visibility was too poor. On the way back, after we turned around, we took a little bit of a different route than I normally take. You know, every year the trails are just a little bit different. So it's not like a designated marked trail, it's just a corridor that they allow you to travel in. So some years people go, you know, to the left around this tree or around this pond or lake or whatever. And then the next year they might go to the right. The track that I always take is going to the left this year, um, but most people were going to the right. So when we came back out, and a little tangled up there just due to the visibility. Well, we used a trusted GPS and we were able to get back on our track. So I didn't really freak out there. You guys are probably a little stressed out about that. <laughs> but uh, all I heard was, are we lost? Are we lost? Are we, I think we're lost. All my anxiety about it was for you guys. It, it wasn't really for me. It was 
because I knew that we would we would get back to where we were wanted to be. Because the track in there right now, because it hasn't been fresh in a while, is so beat down. I told myself when I looked forward and I couldn't see that anymore, then that's when I was going to turn around. And that's when I turned around. A lot of his cues and body language, I was like, if Louis is still doing hoilies, then we're okay. <laughs> He's been telling us for years, you know, you got to come up here and do a sledding trip with me. This is like riding BMX, but on snow with motors. <laughs> he was totally right. <laughs> Louis is going to let me drive this performance skidoo. Is this a good idea? It's not the best idea I, I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be okay. We're in a pretty open area. Please have a healthy respect for that machine. Yeah, definitely have a healthy, healthy respect for this bottle because it's, it's intense. Mm -hmm. You might have just spent twenty thousand dollars, buddy. Don't send me the bill, but you can blame me all you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill myself on this. You want to uh, learn how to get it going on its side? You want to do a slight turn this way, dip your shoulder that way, throttle a little bit, she'll come right up on her side. Not, not bad for the sled, you're not gonna get hurt or anything. It'd, yeah. it'd be better than the bail you had in this, yesterday because this thing weighs like twice as much. Okay. You try to hit your shoulder off of like your ankle. Once it's up on its side, you can balance yourself back the other way. You wanna keep that ski on the ground, this one off the ground. That initial, when you first start it, lean a bit harder. I thought we were gonna tip over. It doesn't matter, you can go right away. Hold on. I'll be doing it already. Wicked. Can you go the other way? <laughs> I asked Becky when you were going around, I was like, do I look that slow when I'm going around? She was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt like I was doing what you were doing. It felt like it. I'm you fucking need, beef. You need to be turning. It's hard, man. I'm telling you. Four ways. No wrong foot. Like that. Okay. Do this way a little bit, then. There you go. There you go. You don't have to take the right too. You're using more muscle than you need to be. Mm. And it's harder to keep it going. I think I used more energy in the last 10 minutes than I have the entire trip. The auto control on this on this sled is one of the most important things to riding it the right way. <laughs> oh, Willie! He did a Willie! I'm gonna try to do a wheelie. <laughs> yeah, I got a long ways to go before I catch up with you. You'll try more things once you think you can do them. That was fucking sick! <laughs> that was a good one, right? Yeah, it was a good one. <laughs> a lot better than your other ones, for sure. We, can we get one of those? As soon as you left it went out, I was like, Becky, you probably just spent $20,000. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you taking us out. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we're yeah. not done yet. We're not done yet, there's only like halfway done. We got still have tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we still got tomorrow. I tipped over the free ride over there. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> oh, I missed it. And then I was trying, I couldn't pick it up myself because I'm fucking weak. And so Lou comes over in this. Oh, my one skid. This thing's like 750 pounds. You're just like, show it off. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's nice to be better at an extreme sport than him now. <laughs> feels really good. I used to be going, look at that trick he's doing. I wish I could do that. No, that's what he feels like. Foof to ice pick. Mount Pearl skate park. Yeah, the bike rack. Yeah, yeah it was it was the, the bike rack, rack subrail. I finally pulled it and he was just like, <laughs> and then now, now I'm like, the tables have turned. He comes in, ring, I'm like. <laughs> so, it's, a, it's been a humbling experience in the list. All right, let's head back. Let's head back. With tomorrow forecasting snowy conditions, we knew our window to get to the gorge had run out. Even though our goal was to see it from the top, we had an incredible time exploring the back country of our home province during the winter. And it was another lesson learned in not tying happiness solely to a single goal and enjoying the journey whether or not you make it to your original destination. I'm quite tired and I'm quite sore. When we started this thing, he said he'd be surprised if we could do more than two days. And I don't think I could do more than two and a half days for sure, my body's feeling it. Had a little bit of a lazy morning this morning. Took it easy, had breakfast, put a fire in, and just kind of chilled out. Took a few photos of Lou this morning tying flies, so I was having a blast with that, just taking pics and nice window light. A little later in the afternoon now, this is our last day. It's 
been snowing a bit this morning, but blustery, but it's after calming down a little bit. So we're gonna take advantage of the afternoon and get one final ride in. We're gonna go try to get to the sinkhole today. There's like a river there and it just, I guess it collapsed underneath, somehow washed out and there's a giant waterfall and it usually freezes and it's, it's a pretty cool spot. It's only like a half hour away. So it's a nice leisurely day because um, the weather is not 100%. So and we'll so still today take advantage we're gonna, of it. We're gonna be going which direction? Uh, we're gonna go this direction, so that would be like south today. Well, it's not to pick up once we decided to go out. Yeah, I know, right? Wait, do people go down there? It's a rope there, right? Okay. Okay, so we made it to the sinkhole. It's pretty treacherous to get down there. It's like basically an ice slide with ropes. It's gonna be a work coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! All right, fuck the rope! <laughs> <laughs> the boys just went down. <laughs> I don't know if I am either. I'll just enjoy it from up here. I know my limits. How are we gonna get out of here? I don't know. We're gonna climb, use our arms, I guess. I... Cause that rope up there, you can only go so far up. There's tracks are everywhere, so people are getting up out of it. Obviously. I'd like to go down there, but you know, my gut is saying, don't do it. I don't think you're gonna be able to get out. This is pretty amazing. How high would you say this is? Maybe like 200 feet? It's giant. Icicles hanging down. That's usually a waterfall, apparently. So I wouldn't go under those. Those look like they would literally kill you if they came down on you. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, going under the danger zone with the icicles. I guess theoretically, this whole rock wall could come down and collapse on us too. I mean, it's already proven it can do it once, right? It's the first time I've ever been down here. No one would ever come down with me. Oh, you mean, I just thought you come down here all the time. No, it's the first time. <laughs> yeah, nobody I ever came with would ever come down with me. You knew I'd be game, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. We almost got Becky down here too. The first part, see, is probably the sketchiest because yeah. you have to transfer from one rope to the other. Yeah. That freaked her out, I think. Look at these pillars, man. That's so crazy, cool. crazy. my crampons. So this sign is probably usually up to hip height, but though there's so much snow here that I'm sitting on the ground <laughs> reading it. So we're at the Le Monde sinkhole here. Apparently this is made of limestone, which is just below kind of a layer of slate. And it says here that they think that acidic bog water came through and kind of eroded the limestone, which caused a big cavernous area underneath the waterfall that eventually gave way, causing this cave. If you're quiet, you can hear what sounds like water going through pipes. And then you realize that there's like a waterfall inside this column of ice. There's like, there's a waterfall in there. Yeah. Like there's a waterfall inside that column of ice. That's insane. Like I want to see inside. The waterfall is all frozen up there now, but in the summertime, the water comes down and it doesn't form a pond. It just like drains away into the ground. So it says here that it's possible that this is a mouth to an extensive cave system here uh, that might drain into the Lamont River. This is uh, about 30 meters deep, so pretty neat, pretty neat spot. I guess all the ice just builds up there and freezes and builds, eventually builds that big column. It's pretty cool. Oh, you mean it starts freezing from the bottom up? Yeah. All right, I think we're done down here. Lewis has already scrambled his way up the rope climb. So he has gotten out successfully, but he doesn't have a 30 pound backpack on. And also he's in much better shape than I am. I'm already beat out and I haven't even gotten to the rope yet. 
I thought this trip was gonna be sitting on motorized vehicles and just relaxing. Your legs would have been all beefed up now from riding the free ride yesterday. Yeah, you know what? I don't think that happens that fast. And let's be real here, I wasn't riding the free ride, the free ride was riding me. <laughs> Where'd you go, babe? <laughs> I'm fucking tired. Yeah, that's why I didn't go down there. If you are struggling, I would be fucked. See the green rope on your on your right? Yep. Go to that one. Yeah. Becky's gonna drive us home. Too tired after this. I'm going 30 miles an hour. I don't think I can make it the rest of the way. I'm gonna live here for the rest of my life. Yeah. Woo! We did it. <laughs> <laughs> I can taste blood. <laughs> Let's go for you. It's close by. Now I know why no one else is going to sinkhole with Lou. I'm gonna call him sinkhole Lou now. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people come to me and say they hate the winter. One of my favorite things to do is like you're at a grocery store or you're at a, a gas station in Newfoundland, everyone has a little conversation with it. We, we call it a yarn, right? So they'll say, oh, you know, snow is coming next week. You can tell right away by the way they said it that they're upset about it. And I will say how much I like the snow just to get them going. And they say right away, oh, you must be a snowmobiler, are you? And I'll say, oh, yes, sir. can't wait, bring it on. I don't like being cold and I generally don't like the winter. Going on this snowmobile trip definitely was a new way to experience winter for me in a very, very fun way. There's, there's a bunch of winter things that you can do. I, I think the key to it is really just, just getting outside and, and taking advantage of it. You don't have to own a snowmobile to enjoy winter. If you go snowshoeing, you can enjoy skiing, skating. I think as long as you can try to find some joy in that season, then, then you'll, you'll start to enjoy it. If you want to take advantage of it, it's there to take advantage of. I remember when we were kids, we would be dreading when the snow would fall and just counting down the days till the snow thawed in the spring and we could ride our bikes again. I think all of us kind of looked at the winter as like a terrible time, but it's very interesting now to see that for Lewis, that has completely 180'd and he's counting down the days till the snow falls so he can ride his snowmobile. And it's definitely the same passion that he had for riding BMX from our childhood. I caught myself a few times going into this winter really grieving the summer. And I think it's because I've become so passionate about camping and I feel like I'm kind of missing out now that the weather is changing. Despite it being cold and windy, there wasn't a time where I thought I'm freezing and uncomfortable. Most of my discomfort came from facing new experiences and challenges. Even though we didn't make it to the gorge, this trip definitely changed my perspective on winter and gave me the level of adventure that I was looking for this season. I always tell people that don't like snow, you need to find the joy in the snow because if you don't, you'll have the same amount of snow and a lot less joy. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you again for the trip. No problem. Oh, it was fantastic. I think we learned a lot. Yeah, I think you guys did too. You guys did extremely well. Oh, uh, appreciate it. I gotta say. You hear that? He said we did well. Yeah. <laughs> There's no take backs. <laughs> yeah, well, he only flipped over once, so that's that's pretty good in my Twice. book. So you kind of tried that second time. Okay, we'll give you, we'll give you that yeah. one. Yeah. 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 We never got out to the gorge. No. We never completed our mission, but uh, that just makes you want to come back for more. Same time, same place next year. <laughs> <laughs>